Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. Today we're going to be doing another supernatural DIY. This is kind of actually more like a supernatural slash Harry Potter mashup type thing. But yeah, it's definitely based on an item from Supernatural series. And I've only done one Supernatural DIY before this for a, a Demon Hunters kit. And I had a lot of fun with it and I really want to do more with uh, Supernatural stuff as well. And I know there's a lot of Supernatural fans that watch m uh, my videos and stuff. So hopefully you guys appreciate this as well. Um, but anyways, today we're gonna be making hex bags. And in Supernatural, these are like bags of like, with like hex items and, and ingredients and stuff in them and then um, they actually are used to hex a person of course by a witch so um, what I the way I'm gonna sort of work a Harry Potter aspect into this is I'm making tags you can tie to the hex bags themselves which have a hex name and they're all hexes that exist in the Harry Potter series and a small like description of what the hex does so each hex bag you could make uh, has a different hex associated with it uh, based on the ingredients inside the bag. So that's what we're gonna do today. Go ahead and check out the description box below for a list of supplies you're gonna need, as well as the free downloadable templates, and let's get started. To do this uh, project, we're going to need some cloth. I picked this out because it looked like something that a witch would use for her hex bag. I like the brown color and how it's not just one perfect shade of brown. You can see the stitching in there, and that's kind of what I was going for. Um, and then I also bought some of this Distress ink we're going to use to sort of make this look a little more dirty and a little more old. So first we just want to cut out kind of like a small square, and it doesn't have to be a perfect square. Um, it's just going to need to be, you know, as close as you can get it, but you don't have to like measure it or anything. And then uh, you probably just want it to be about uh, this big right here, probably like, you know, whatever this is, like about six inches by six inches or so. So I'm just going to uh, cut this out with a pair of scissors. So you can use a rotary cutter if that's what you want to use, anything you want. But I'm not too worried about getting the cuts perfect because it's supposed to look kind of tattered. Okay, so now we've got our base piece of cloth. Let's make this look a bit old with some distress ink. And we're probably only going to need maybe the, the darker brown and maybe a little bit of the black. So now we have a piece of scrap paper underneath here. I'm going to use the darker brown, uh, it says walnut stain. And then I'm just going to sort of rub this onto the piece of, of cloth. I need to get definitely all the edges going around this need to be the darker color. So we'll just go ahead and distress the entire border of this and sort of fade that in toward the center. Wipe it toward the center, but don't get, don't go all the way to the center. You want the center to stay kind of like the lighter color and then the edges to be darker and sort of fading in toward the center. And then we can also use a little bit of black here and there just to make it look a bit stained. Oh, and this will get all over your fingers, by the way. Um, it doesn't come out too easily, but it sort of just, you know, just comes off throughout the day. <laughs> At least it did last time I did this. So there, now the cloth looks much more dirty and used and stuff. So that's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and do the other side. And you can, t you can really see the difference between this side and that side. So now we have distressed our, our fabric. So the next thing we want to do is uh, pick out the ingredients that we want to put in here. Also pick which side you want to be on the uh, showing on the outside. I'm going to use this side to be the outside of my bag. So I'll flip it over and all of my ingredients are going to go right into the center of this. So I picked a few things. I've got some uh, some sage right here and then I also have some other, this is some fresh sage as well and then I've got thyme and rosemary and just some other stuff just to you know, make it look like it has some uh, <laughs> magical ingredients on the inside. I also got this little jar of wishes, but it's actually uh, fake wish bones. So I figured those would be cool to sort of toss in there as well. Maybe a couple of these. And we'll just put some thyme in there, a little bit of rosemary, some sage. And if you had like, like some uh, 
fake hair or something, you could toss that in there. Just anything that looks like it could be uh, magical ingredients of some kind. There's some uh, dried sage as well. This is actually a smudge stick. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've got some sage in there. Now, if you were to try and kind of bring this up into a little bag, like our hex bag is going to be, it's not going to stand up because there's no weight to it. You've just got all these different little very light ingredients in there. So you want to go get a, a rock from, <laughs> from outside or a stone that you like or something. And we're just going to draw a rune on it to make it look like it sort of belongs in here in the hex bag. So you can look up different runes and pick one that you like. But I'm gonna use this one. I'm not quite sure what it means, but you know, it looks cool. So that's my rune. And so your rune stone is going to go in there as well, just as sort of a weight to keep this thing from falling over. Now let's set this aside because we need to make our tags. So you want to print out the template and these are basically tags that tell you what hex this bag is and then a small description of what it is. And the font that I used is like the Half-Blood Prince uh, handwriting and stuff. So some of it's a little bit difficult to read. But, I mean, I think it looks pretty cool. So yeah, you want to print this double-sided. And the version that you see right here is uh, sort of bleeding into each other here because there is a, a Cricut template, which is what I'm going to use to cut these out. And I also have some that do not have the, uh, you know, the bleed. So if you want to just cut them out yourself with a pair of scissors, you can. However, I like using the Cricut because it's a lot easier so once that's done, we have just a whole bunch of tags here. And we're going to use those to label our hex bag. Now the next thing that you, sh you can use is this um, tag maker and some eyelets. And we can make these tags uh, look pretty good. But if you don't have access to this or you don't want to go out and buy one, you can just use a hole punch. However, it makes it much easier for these to rip when you're trying to put them, trying to string them uh, put the string through here and, and tighten it and everything. So yeah, I'm going to use this tag maker. So on this in particular one, this backside, this uh, top little, you can see sort of like this line right here, that is actually a hole punch you're going to use. And then the front part is where you actually uh, connect the eyelet to the tag. So for my hex bag, I kind of want to use, you know what, since the font is in uh, the Half-Blood Prince's handwriting, I'm going to use the um, Sictum Sempra tag. First, you want to put a hole punch in the tag. Put the larger part of the eyelet, the part that's open already, on the back of the tag, and the smaller part on the front. And when you put this in the tag maker, you want the small part facing down. So the part that's already flat should be facing up when you do this. And then you just bring this down, and then we should be done. So your tag should look something like this. And in fact, you know how I said that you put the uh, side that's already flat, the larger circle side down on the back? You could use that on either side. It doesn't matter. I just kind of prefer the smaller one on the front side, but it's really up to you. Next, we have this leather string that I bought that I'm going to use to close up the hex bag and attach the tag to it. So we'll go ahead and cut off quite a bit of this leather string and then we can start closing up the hex bag. So to do this, you want to fold the corners into each other like this, all four corners up into each other. And then you can just sort of grab right here and you should have all of your ingredients to the hex bag right there at the bottom and then sort of a bunch of uh, cloth bunched up at the top. And now we will wrap the thread or leather, leather string around this several times until you have enough, just enough to maybe make a bow. And at this point, you can thread your tag through and then we're gonna tie it on. And then you 
once you tie your bow on here, you're probably going to have one side that has a lot more thread left to it. So just go ahead and trim that down. And there is your hex bag. And depending on how much, uh, how many ingredients you actually put in the bag, you could make this sort of a, a larger thing. But I think, I think it looks like a pretty cool little hex bag uh, just being small like this, so that's why I decided to make mine smaller. Now the first time I did it, this is what I got. And so you could do it this way as well. It, it turned out bigger and it has burlap on the outside, which I distressed. And then it has the brown fabric on the inside as well, like this. I just thought that this one turned out way too big and um, I kind of liked the smaller looking hex bag like this. It's more like it looks in uh, the actual Supernatural TV show. And yeah, so you could do it either way. I have a whole bunch of burlap now, so I'll have to figure something out or maybe make some extra large hex bags out of it like this. But yeah, let me know which one you like best um, in the comment section. I kind of like the smaller one myself, which is why this is what I went with for the DIY. Um, but yeah, like I said, only difference is it's double wrapped with a, a layer of burl distressed burlap on the outside. I really hope you guys liked this video. I had a lot of fun making this, and if you'd like a chance at winning the hex bag that I made in this video today, there's a link in the description box below to the uh, giveaway, and I usually announce the winners of all the previous months giveaways at the first of every month, so you'll have some time to enter this one. Speaking of giveaways, it's time to announce the winners for two different giveaways. I've got a winner for the Potent Portals cover, which I designed. It was an Accio Box exclusive cover. Uh, this one is a bit of a misprint. It's just slightly off, but it still looks pretty great on the shelf, especially like if, if you're just looking at the spine, you can't even tell. So anyways, yeah, the winner to this is Kelly Smith. And then I also have the uh, Makusa Spell Map winner to announce in this video. So the winner for this map is Samantha Berrialt. I hope that I pronounced your last name right. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully I did. If not, I apologize, but you win anyways. Congratulations to both of you. And I've sent you emails with instructions on how you can claim your prize. And let's go ahead and end this video with the featured comment. And this will be for um, my previous DIY, the uh, potion making book box. So let's see. Stephanie Weber says, I'd love a series like this of book boxes for all of the Hogwarts text textbooks. Great video. Thank you so much, and that's an awesome thing. I was actually thinking that would be really cool since I already have the size and we know where to buy the book box to, so it fits. It won't be too difficult to just design other covers to fit this book box. So yeah, that's a great idea, and I'd love to do at least a couple other ones. That would be awesome. So yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Anyways, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you wanna see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.